Hello fellow computer enthusiasts, my name is Christian, hope you're doing well today. Welcome to my second video where I would like to show you how I utilize one of my Raspberry Pis as a server in my home network. These tiny little helpers can provide amazing self-hosted services and do a lot in automation while being still very power efficient. The first service I would like to mention is called Dashi, the ultimate homepage for your home lab. What you see here is the entry point for our home network that provides links to all the services hosted on Raspberry Pis and other bigger server machines. But there is more than just links. Dashi can also do health checks for your services, as well as providing extended functionality with integrated widgets to ask for dynamic content like your public IP address, a vulnerability feed or detailed system information of a server. It comes with a lot of themes to fit your aesthetic likings and can be customized with ease using the integrated what you see is what you get editor or directly in the underlying YAML file as we used to do it within the GUI net. All the services within my home network utilize the infrastructure as code approach. So like and subscribe if you want to know more about having your infrastructure available as code with all the benefits that you can get there. And don't worry. I will explain my Docker Compose configuration with traffic as a reverse proxy to provide valid SSL certificates via the awesome Let's Encrypt service in the end of this video. You might remember my family's personal library which utilizes an approach called Docs Code from one of my previous videos. It is a place where my family and I store all the personal information relevant to us, like a very small and very specific version of Wikipedia. In general, this is just a Docker container running an HTTP server like Nginx or Apache to serve a static web page that has been automatically generated from restructured text and markdown files stored in a GitLab repository. If you like the approach of generating static web pages to display non-dynamic content, you should consider subscribing because I'm currently working on a crash course in Rust using a static page generator called Zola. I will use it to generate an overview about all the games and ROMs that I own a digital copy of, as well as to make the ROMs accessible via my home network. The whole concept of our home network is to offer as much services such as gaming, consuming media, developing stuff and all the other little things we do with computers in a fashion that we can use it on every device in our household, be it a tablet, a smartphone, notebook or desktop computer. To achieve this, for development, we are hosting two instances of code server, one on a Raspberry Pi, which you can see here, and another more powerful one on a Threadripper equipped Unraid server. The Raspberry Pi code server instance is great if you want to add to the library or just fiddle around on prototype while watching TV in the living room. It runs 24 seven, is very power efficient and is also available via VPN when we are on vacation, for example. But let's talk a little bit about the code server itself. It is a Visual Studio Code instance that you can access in your browser. I would recommend the Linux server IO container because it comes with a lot of Docker extensions so that you get a perfect environment for most of the famous programming languages out there. And if something is not available, you can just create your own extension or modify your container to your needs. It's based on Ubuntu, so you can just use app to install new packages according to your needs. Just make sure to bind volumes outside of the container for your configuration as well as a folder to check out source code and to store your workspaces. But as you all know, working directly on a local or remote machine isn't as handy and secure when it comes to maintaining source code. That's where our two source code management systems come into play. We have a big GitLab instance running on a big server and our small GOGS instance running on the Raspberry Pi. GOGS is an easy to use frontend for Git repositories, very similar to GitHub or GitLab, with all the features you need to maintain your source code like pull requests, wiki pages, and as well as organizing project and repositories, but without the heavy build server and pipeline capabilities. Therefore, the hardware requirements are very low and the memory footprint of GOGS is very small. And it can run literally on every device such as a Raspberry Pi or a NAS. That is the reason why we use it on the Raspberry Pi to have repositories available while our big GitLab server is offline to save power. 
for example, while being on vacation. What would a Raspberry Pi be without an instant of Pi Holes, a classic black hole for internet advertisement, which acts as an easy to use ad blogger and DNS resolver? In fact, we use two instances of Pi Hole on two different Raspberry Pis just to have a backup if one instance has issues or a power outage. Pi Hole can do a lot of good things for your home network. I mean, obviously, it blocks advertisement and internet tracking by acting as a DNS sinkhole. But it can also be used to secure your DNS queries over HTTPS by making sure that every DNS query goes to a DNS over HTTPS resolver like the one provided by Google. In addition to that, you can set up your Raspberry Pi to act as a recursive DNS server, which makes your web browsing experience faster, I mean over time, and even more secure, because it protects you from DNS poisoning. It's very easy to set up, and I will create a short tutorial how to set up a Pi hole properly in one of my upcoming videos. Speaking about whom to trust and security, we also utilize the Raspberry Pi to host our very own instance of Vault Warden, formerly known as Bitwarden, to store our passwords and secrets. Vault Warden is a great place to store all your secrets within your local network and makes them available to any client, whether it be a browser-based one like your desktop PC or a smartphone or tablet. A side effect of self-hosting the service is that you save a little money each month by not being forced to pay for a cloud service that offers the same functionality. Vault Warden can also be used to generate long and secure random passwords for every service you use in the internet to make sure that you aren't using the same password for every account so that not all your online activities get compromised in the case that one of your accounts gets leaked or hacked in the internet. In our container-based setup, it's important to have a backup mechanism for the database in place so that you don't accidentally lose your passwords while updating the container. Keep that in mind, please. The next service I would like to introduce is SSH Rifty, which is a web SSH and Telnet client that is great to connect to our service. Especially in a situation where I need to reach my home network from outside, often via a smartphone or tablet, where I can't rely on a good terminal emulator. There's not much to say about SSH Rifty. It's fast, reliable, and it can store session and server information and save me a lot of time while fixing stuff on the Raspberry Pis and servers via SSH while being on vacation, for example. Even if I use infrastructure as code and I'm used to work with a command line interface, it's nice to have at least one running instance of a service called Portainer. The main reason is to visualize all the container-based services within our home network, whether they be running on a Raspberry Pi or distributed on other servers or devices. With a small agent running on every Docker host on our home network, we get access to every container on our network. I mainly use the service to check whether I have unused images, volumes, or networks from previous experiments and to clean up those Docker hosts from time to time. But it's also great to have a what you see is what you get editor to spin up new Docker containers and services on our Raspberry Pis as well as our Unraid servers. We host an instance of RabbitMQ, which is the most widely deployed open source message broker. In our home network, we need a message broker for our own projects, like the Aquanaut bots that we have developed and that use asynchronous messaging to communicate across different devices of the project. If you want to know more about robots that you can build with the Raspberry Pi, for example, make sure to like and subscribe because I will feature our bots in one of the upcoming videos. Beside our own projects, a message broker like RabbitMQ is also helpful if you want to provide access to your IoT devices without the provided proprietary applications, because most of these devices are utilizing a message mechanism that you can bypass. And the good thing, RabbitMQ comes with an easy to use web interface, which makes maintenance and also debugging of queues and the asynchronous communication much easier. When it comes to home automation within your home network or with your IoT devices, NodeRed is my favorite choice to go. It's an easy to learn programming tool that helps wiring together hardware devices, APIs and cloud services with ease. In our home network, it takes care of generating alerts as well as turning on the lights when our surveillance system detects motion while we are not at home. 
but there are plenty other use cases that you can easily implement with Node-RED, so just give it a try and have a look. Home Assist is amazing when it comes to IoT and service integration into a simple dashboard. You can literally integrate every local or cloud service that offers an API into Home Assist, and many of them have already been covered so that the integration is just a single click and providing basic information like the URL or the basic authentication stuff. It is also great to control your whole house, like turning on computers and lights, as well as getting an overview of your security cameras and the latest motion detected. We utilize Home Assist on our mobile devices to interact with our home surveillance system, as well as the IoT lights and switches in our home. And for me as a maintainer of the whole ecosystem at home, it's also great to have an eye on the energy bill, as well as updating every device from a single dashboard without the need of fiddling around with all the different IoT device apps provided by the product creators. With Watchtower running as a container on the Raspberry Pis, we endure to always have the latest version of our containerized applications running. Watchtower will pull down new images, gracefully shut down our existing containers, and we start with the same options that were used to deploy them initially. Nothing more to say, it's fast, it's reliable and simple solution to keep your container images up to date. Last but not least, I would like to mention the reverse proxy that we use on every server and Raspberry Pi within our home network, Traffic. Traffic is our reverse proxy that we usually use with containerized setups utilizing infrastructure as code because it integrates very well with existing infrastructure components like Docker and Kubernetes and configures itself automatically and dynamically. It also provides HTTPS for all the self-hosted services within the containers by leveraging Let's Encrypt wildcard certificates. As you can see in our Docker Compose file, it is very easy to ramp up new services and provide an URL with SSL support to it. In future, I will go into further details and explain traffic in the most common use cases as a reverse proxy and also as a load balancer within Kubernetes and with Docker, so make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching this episode about my home network and how I utilize one of my Raspberry Pis as a server. But there's much more to come with all the other Raspberry Pis in our home network. If you like the content and if you want to see more of this kind of content, consider to like and subscribe the video and my channel. That's it for today, and as always, don't forget to play with computers.